Good day, people of the internet. This is Guild Wars 2 Basics, and today we'll be discussing geography. While I'm going to be telling you the geography of the continent of Tyria, I will also be discussing some aspects of the lore and history associated with those areas. So the first part is, I'm going to put a map up on the screen right now, and also in the description, that should be helpful for new people, or people who don't always know how the zones go about for categorizing them into different um, regions. When you're doing your daily achievements, you're told to go like go to the Maguma jungle to harvest herbs, or Ascalon to go mine stuff. You might not know exactly where to go, so this map should be helpful. It also has the Azura portals leading you places. It shows where the Azura gates go. That's it. So, jumping right into the actual geography, we're going to start out in the Far Shiver Peaks and the Shiver Peaks. I'm going to be describing each region in a way that I have written up for it. So this is not from the wiki or anywhere else. This is just how I've decided to describe each of the regions. So, the Far Shiver Peaks and Shiver Peaks. A mountainous range of snow, ice, and stone. In the Far Shiver Peaks, an inland sea was made with the awakening of the Elder Dragon Jormag, causing various races to flee south. The Kodan, Quaggan, and the Norn are some of the races that have had to flee. The Norn took up residency in the central valleyish region of the Shiver Peaks. They are constantly holding their ground from Jotun, Grawl, Dredge, and Jormag's forces, who caused some Norn, the sons of Swanir, to worship him as the spirit of the wilds. Wilds. Ascalon, the gem of Tyria. Wait, that's the wrong footage. Nope, that's not it either. There we go. Ascalon used to belong to the roving clans of the Char. For a time until the humans moved up from the south and kicked the Char north. After many generations, the Char finally found a way into the human kingdom. They pulled a good old-fashioned American and nuked the whole country with fire, causing the searing. Hundreds if not thousands of humans died. Char casualties are not known. Blame human historians. The land became ashen, charred, and scarred by fire, tar, and crystals. Eighteen years later, the Char finally break into the capital of Ascalon, only to be welcomed by the humans who also pulled an American and nuked all of Ascalon again. This was the foe fire, killing Char around the capital, but the humans, they were all killed around the countryside. And in the wake of their smoldering corpses arose an army of the dead to fight forever. Ooh, spooky ghost. So, the Char hold Ascalon, a very war-torn country of ghosts, Char rebels, racist humans, and dragon minions. It's a lovely countryside of autumn colors with gunpowder in the air and a giant purple scar tearing through the land full of dragon minions of the Elder Dragon Kralkatoric. Now for Kryda. After the second exodus of the gods, Ascalon falling to the Char and connections with Alona and Kantha cut off due to Elder Dragon's anti-foreigner ideals and crazy power-hungry liches, Kryda has become the last bastion for humanity in Tyria. Kryda is a countryside of rolling green hills with waterways or swamps, your choice of words, interspaced. The threats Crichtons face every day are centaurs from the north, risen from the south, bandits, pirates, and corruption within the kingdom, and other immediate threats. The Crystal Desert. A sandy land of forgotten magic and civilization. This is where the humans would travel to ascend and become closer to their gods. Years ago, the Forgotten, a serpentine race, lived in the desert and guarded the secrets to ascension to become closer to the gods. The current situation of the Crystal Desert is unknown. What is known is that the Crystal Desert is less deserty. Currently, a river is flowing in through the desert, fueling growth of plants and lushness. The Ruins of Or, The once glorious nation of Or, has fallen from grace, below an ocean, and came back after a dragon brought it out of the ocean, and made all the previous inhabitants slaves of its will. So Or is where the elder dragon Zaitan rose, bringing the whole landmass back from the depths. Some flooding and death did follow suit on inhabitants in every direction, the Ring of Fire. This region has many names, but I personally prefer the Fire Island Chain. This is the largest volcanic chain in Tyria, the continent, and quite possibly the world! This place is significant for two reasons. One, one of the largest magical artifacts resides within the largest volcano, 
unless the eruption of a supervolcano can break a bloodstone. And right next to the bloodstone is a gateway called the Gate of Kumali, which leads to a land called the Realm of Torment. That name might not be the same, and the door may be closed. Lava does tend to do that to doors. The Steam Spur Mountains and Tarnished Coast The Maguma jungle stretches from the Tarnished Coast in the far west, all the way to the Steam Spur Mountains in the east. The land is a lush jungle of exotic creatures and plants. One race that lives here are the Azura, a subterranean race that was pushed to the surface by the fire dragon Primordus. They have built vast cities and research labs in the jungle and study everything possible. The second race that resides here are the Solvari. They are plant beings who imitate the look of humans. They are the youngest race to come to Tyria, being only 25 years old, but they have made grand footsteps in this chaotic world. The Maguma Wastes. A wasteland of sand and stone, with some greenery, but even that is hostile. The land is heavily vertical, with cliffs, canyons, and plateaus to traverse. The creatures of the wastes vary greatly from boars to devourers to earth elementals and even hostile plants that have made their way eastward. Now, before I wrap up the video, there is something we have recently got with, Ax with Guild of Wars 2, is we've gotten access to the globe of the world. So, back in 2012, I do believe during the betas, um, a player named That Shaman found a big globe in the Chantry of Whispers. He then made a 3D model of this globe and then cut it out and made it into a 2D model. I'll put the picture up right now. And we've been using this as our only reference of the globe. But a couple months ago, as of this episode being recorded and posted and all, we recently got into the Durin Priory, and they had this giant rug in one of their chambers that was a map of Tyria. So that shaman pulled that as well, data mined that uh, file, and he made a two-dimensional map of that. Then the community spent a couple weeks actually translating the words on the map into this map on screen. And he did make a 3D model of this map as well. I will be linking you to his blog post and where I actually pulled these maps. So if you enjoyed the episode, hit like, comment, subscribe, and hit me up on the Twitters, and have a day.